Hello, I'm Jared Weiss, Medical Oncologist and Vice President of Cancer Grace, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight with Josh uh, Baumel, uh, Dr. Josh Baumel of Hospital of University of Pennsylvania, uh, and Dr. Sid Sheth from the University of North Carolina. Um, we're here tonight to discuss uh, advances in cancer treatment of head and neck cancer uh, from the ASCO 2017 meeting. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, the average use in the United States um, when people use weekly cisplatin is not 40 as you're doing, right? It's 30. Um, 30 times 7 is 210, assuming you get them all in. Um, and that's where I think we get into the, the data today. Um, these are studies looking at 30, mm -hmm. um, not the 40 that you're using. So they're both using the weekly regimen so that you can bail or adjust as you go if you get into trouble, but they've also gone down at the dose at the same time. That's right. And I wish that were where the complexity ended, but there <laughs> is indeed uh, a little bit more, isn't it, to, to honestly talk about uh, what we saw today. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to do as any good moderator does and punt the complexity to you, Josh. That's fine, I'll <laughs> catch it. Um, and so, so what we have here are two studies. So the first study was done in India. Um, the study was billed as a study of all head and neck cancer looking at concurrent chemo radiation with once weekly versus every three was, weeks. Was that what it was? No, it wasn't really what it was. There's a very high rate of oral cavity cancer, so cancers in the mouth yeah. in India, and that's due to a lot of factors. It's due to a higher rate of tobacco use in that region, but also there's a cultural use of um, something called betel nuts, mm -hmm. and that's not something we see outside of the Indian subcontinent very frequently, but it's very prevalent there. And, and, and driving some of these cancers. And it's yeah. causing some of these cancers. So it's unclear what impact that has on how to interpret these results. So in this study, 93% of these patients had oral cavity cancer. So they did an oral cavity study. Yeah. And it was post-op, right? So, yes. And so we have a study of post-op oral cavity in India. Would that it were that simple because the other 7% didn't have surgery. So it, it would be cleaner, honestly, if they just said this is an oral cavity study and limited that way. But instead, they included others to try to answer this important question. Um, but you can't make any analyses of those other subgroups because they're seven percent of them. Um, so in any case, what they showed in this study was that weekly cisplatin was associated with significantly worse outcomes. And it was a large difference. This was surprising. The other thing which they showed in this study which was surprising was that the every week dosing was more toxic. This is very surprising, because this is not what I see clinically, and this is not what I would expect. Um, so that was that study. At the same time, another study was done in nasopharyngeal cancer, which is a very different cancer, um, and is usually grouped as a separate entity entirely. But there, that's actually one of the best studies to look at this 40 dosing, because one of the largest studies of nasopharynx cancer a phase three study, which was done recently, just decided to use 40 as the comparator regimen. They just switched it. And they didn't have a phase three to justify it, but everyone was doing it, so it was okay. <laughs> um, so it worked that's, out well, so well in childhood, why not in clinical trials? It's totally trials? fine. So, um, so they used, they used um, the weekly dosing of cisplatin, and they compared it in terms of dose reduction to two doses of high-dose cisplatin. So a reduced dose of the high dose. Um, and what they saw in that study was that weekly was identical in terms of outcomes to every three week. So we have two studies, both with limitations in terms of application to the United States, um, but two studies that have disparate findings. So we're left with just as much confusion as we had before, I'm afraid, in terms of how to manage this. Um, I don't think that the oral cavity study means that my practice of using weekly is wrong, because I'm not using it preferentially to bolus. I'm using it when I can't use the bolus anyway. Um, but I think that it provides me pause that further 
research to be done. So let's imagine that next week um, into your practice comes a uh, middle-aged uh, man with uh, military uh, noise-related uh, high-frequency hearing loss and ringing in his ears. Um, maybe he's got mild disease, diabetes, mild, uh, mild kidney decline. Um, and you're, you're afraid of it. Let's keep it simple and say his stage is enough that you're, you're a little afraid of his cancer. Um, what do you do for him? I think that the patient that you're describing who has, if there's clinically relevant hearing dysfunction, I probably would give that patient cetuximab if it was in the definitive setting because now we have some data that is limited that says that the weekly might be worse. And in addition to that, I feel a little bit uncomfortable giving any cisplatin to a person who has significant hearing or kidney injury. Um, you know, these, we can really make people deaf, yes. and that deafness does not go away. And so I don't want to mess around with that, honestly. So I probably would give that patient cetuximab, but if there were a patient with less uh, severe medical problems, I still think I would consider weekly. And then if they start to get into trouble? I would switch them to cetuximab. Then at that point, you just switch them. This, mm -hmm. this makes good common sense, and um, I don't think I have anything to, to add to that. <laughs>